What do you find most notable about how these hackers were able to pull these off with massive companies with very established systems? Yeah, Emily, great question. So I think the biggest concern here of these attacks is clearly how well the attackers understand uh, this potential vulnerability, this process of government requests to technology companies, social media companies, and understand it and are willing to uh, take the risk to exploit it. So talk to us about why it's so apparently easy to do this. I mean, some of the folks behind these attacks we're finding out are, are teenagers. Yeah, uh, great, again, great question. So the interesting thing is it's not easy at all. This is relatively complicated. So first, uh, I would say the easiest part is probably for the attackers to get access to the data that they're stealing. Last year alone, our team identified over 2,500 breaches where there was stolen data leaked. So what the attackers do is buy this information for relatively inexpensive prices and then use that to test out uh, which kind of credentials they can use to legitimately break into uh, organizations. And in this case, they chose those to be law enforcement organizations. The complicating part is they have to understand that process, and then they have to be uh, willing to spend the time that it takes to, to do the social engineering aspects, understanding specifically who they need to contact at these organizations to make these requests, who the legitimate law enforcement officers are, and what their process is. So this is uh, certainly not an easy task for them to orchestrate, clearly being done by people with time on their hands. Well, to that point, the folks suspected in this particular case are minors located in the U.S. and U.K. I'm reminded of the Okta hack that we covered last week where, you know, the suspected mastermind is a teenager who still lives with his mom in England. What do you make of the fact that these are potentially very young people behind these very disruptive attacks? It's, it's incredibly concerning, right? Uh, we typically would see this level of attack orchestrated by an organization who's got clear objectives and clear financial backing. So the point is, these uh, the or organization related to these attacks certainly has overlap with lapses and the activities we've seen last week. Uh, one of the things that they're doing incredibly effectively, and we see this in ransomware investigations as well, is they use uh, time demands as a way to force an organization to make a quick decision. We see that with these ransomware attacks when there's extortion involved, and we're seeing this work very well with these emergency data requests. Now, 600,000 open jobs in cybersecurity. That's what Bloomberg is reporting today, that there are 600,000 jobs uh, in the cyber threat landscape that are unfilled. Is that part of the reason we may be seeing an uptick in hacks? Well, I think you're seeing that. So there's no greater example of that uh, today and the challenges that we as an industry face than as it relates to Russia and Ukraine, right? Uh, the U.S. government has come out and provided a tremendous amount of recommendations and actions to be taken. But the reality is it's challenging for organizations across the world to implement all of them in a timely manner. Uh, it's much cheaper for the attackers to conduct these attacks, and it's much more costly and time and resource intensive for organizations to defend against them today. So, yes, absolutely, that's a concern. Now, we're understanding that the information that was shared with these hackers includes addresses, phone numbers, IP addresses. How damaging could the release of this information be? How could the hackers use it? Well, I think that there is some concern in terms of people being uh, cyber stalked, being uh, that translated to physical attacks, right? So. Uh, when you look at these, uh, the, the people that are behind this, oftentimes, so they're selling this information for a really inexpensive amount, right? The equivalent of about 150 US dollars. So uh, that can be used in a wide variety of ways. We want to make sure that people are protected and, uh, you know, th that this data doesn't then translate to those type of attacks. So certainly law enforcement is going to be working very closely with these organizations uh, who had uh, released the data to make sure that they can uh, protect people. What do you see as the learnings and takeaways here? I mean, is this a new tactic that we're going to see more cyber criminals start exploiting? Yeah, I think it's it's become pretty widespread, right? So these lapsus group attacks over the past week saw uh, the, you know, which you mentioned, right, to Okta, to Microsoft. 
um, the level of sophistication was largely in the social engineering. So the human to human aspects, as well as the persistence uh, of their ability to figure out once they got inside an organization, how they could actually get to the data that they needed. And so uh, what the, the good news on that is that that largely relates to defense and depth strategies and best practices that we recommend to organizations. It doesn't often mean you have to buy millions of dollars of new technology, right? It means we have to get back to the basics and we have to make sure that, for example, if we're a help desk, that we are not uh, asking uh, identity verification questions of our employees. That's information that could be easily found on the internet. So we've got to continually focus on security awareness trainings for organizations and make sure that they're well implemented. As the war on Ukraine shows no signs of de-escalation, but Ukrainian forces and the West have really put a lot of pressure on Russian forces, do you see Russia resorting to more cyber attacks and getting more aggressive in the cyber landscape since we haven't quite seen as potentially devastating attacks from the Russian side as some were expecting yet? I think it's a likely scenario. Uh, one thing we know for certain is that the Russians have an incredibly formidable capability when it comes to cyber attacks and cyber warfare. So we are encouraging all of our clients, as well as non-clients, to be prepared uh, to make sure that they've got uh, documented incident response plans in place, that they understand what roles and responsibilities their uh, employees have. Uh, across the board so that if uh, these attacks do occur, that we've got a well-orchestrated response plan and we can contain, contain the damage as quickly as possible.